Hey, it's Jeffy G here. Just going to talk a little bit about some advanced features or advanced use of the Novation Launchpad X. I bought the thing about two years ago and I had specific ideas in mind. One of the things that was driving the purchase was the neuropathy in my hands. In my intro video, I talk about suffering from poem syndrome and that made it difficult for me to play guitar or play keys. So in the midst of my recovery, I thought, hey, what about a pad device? Would that really help? So I, I picked up a launch pad and um, I've been pretty happy with it. I've, I make extensive use of the custom features and the component software that comes with Novation. And I'm primarily using it with Logic initially. And then I found, you know what? I can use this for iOS music production. So I'm using it with my iPad. And it works great. I'm having no issues and I'm configuring the thing to work with Koala Sampler and Beatmaker 3 and less to a lesser extent with GarageBand, but also Cubasis. So it's um, it's pretty handy. It's a small size. The Launchpad X is kind of in the middle of the range. And there are some capabilities it doesn't have that the Pro model does. And uh, I'm now realizing, you know, what the differences are. So in this video, I'm just going to talk about some of the advanced use that I've come up with for the Launchpad X. So stick around. Okay, it's pretty common that when you, you know, first get a Launchpad is that you try it with some kind of Live Loops app. In this case, I've got Logic open and, you know, I can pick some samples. And... Uh, And then the arrows on the launch pad, you know, help you navigate around that grid. You can move up, left and right, up to the top. It's, it's funny, but sometimes that's that's one of the greatest difficulties is just navigating. But you can see that the button layout on here resembles exactly what you see in Logic. So Live Loops works perfectly right out of the box. No surprise there. Let's open a different project here. What you're looking at here is a song, a basic song. Yeah, so normally you would just use the keyboard. You know, you can press spacebar to play. And if you, you know, go over here, you can hear more of the whole song. This, this is really just a simple five, six track song set up in Logic so we can demonstrate how the launch pad will work. In uh, session mode, You've got different things you can control. Here's the volume. You can scroll up, scroll down, do it quickly or slowly. And that is going to move the sliders. You can see slider one moving up, moving down. You can control the volume of each track. Uh, this is the pan, so you can control the panning. So you've got some DAW like controls. Uh, you've got send A, send B. Um, you've got mute. So when you're playing, everything's on mute there, except the drum track. Turn off all the mutes, got solo. Just bass. soloing the piano and the bass. So you've got some DAW controls that are built into the Launchpad X, and that's that's pretty cool. But it doesn't have a play button, and it doesn't have zoom in and zoom out. It doesn't have all these other capabilities. After I got past the basic features, I started looking at these custom modes, and you can see I've got four different custom modes that I've set up. The second one is just a, a keyboard layout. Uh, it's one of the standard ones that comes with Launchpad. This first one was actually designed for the Koala sampler, and I've got a separate video on that that you can watch down in the uh, description if you're interested in how I've configured the Launchpad for Koala sampler on an iOS device. And this particular one, uh, it's colorful, but what I've done on this one is I've built in all kinds of logic capabilities, and I'll just give you a view at what they look like. So I started with a plan and said, 
And here's how I laid out the additional DAW capabilities that I wanted to build into that custom mode. So I've got a play, a stop, a record, a loop button, a rewind, fast forward, previous and next mark, and then these go to buttons on the second row here. I use these to navigate around the markers, and then I've got previous track, next track, zoom in, zoom out. Now, this all started actually because I was using a Persona's fader port and it had zoom in, zoom out buttons on it, which you know, you can do it on the keyboard as well. It's pretty easy. It's just command arrow. But I thought, hey, why not build those things in? And then the fourth row, I decided I would uh, have it control different tools that I use all the time, like the pencil, scissors, glue, the marquee tool. And then the bottom area, I left for drumming. And you can see I just chromatically incremented the notes, the MIDI notes on those. I did this all in the components app. Just take a look at it. This is the components app that you can load and build whatever custom settings that you want. So I mentioned that Koala setting uh, looks like this. I actually have another one here that I set up for a battery. Is that number four? Yeah, it looks a bit odd. It's like three groups of um, 16 pads each, but I was using battery from Native Instruments and I wanted to be able to use my um, launch pad for executing those types of things. But really this Logic one down here is uh, the one where I've customized the most. So just keep that in mind. I'll just show you how it works. I go over to Logic, custom mode. So play. Stop, cycle button, and you can see I can go back to marker one, marker two, three, four, five, six. I only have eight next track and previous track. You can see I'm changing tracks. Of course, here's the most important thing was the zoom in and zoom out capabilities both horizontally and vertically. I've kept that bottom area for drum machine designer. So if you, I got a drum machine designer set up here where I've loaded a kit. Just a fast way to execute those things. Now, every Logic drum machine designer doesn't actually conform to the same chromatic scale, which has been a bit of a, a bother. So like on the second page here, doesn't necessarily map to a continuation of the uh, of the chromatic scale, but it does tell you, I mean, you can easily map the input here if you want by just changing the input to whatever you want, or you can click on MIDI learn and just touch the pads. Uh, but for the most part, the first page on any drum machine uh, designer kit does map chromatically. So you can, you know, you can always count on C1 to be a kick and uh, C sharp to be a snare usually. And so that works pretty well for me. There is a way actually to create a standard template for Drum Machine Designer. And I've been down that road before. It works great when you're creating your own drum kits, but for a lot of the delivered drum kits within Logic, the mapping of the notes is actually all over the place. Now, sometimes the behavior is kind of weird, like stop works great, but play, it seems to play every note twice. And I think that has to do with the different modes. When you're in the components app, you have some choices that you can make in terms of how you set up and assign these CC numbers. So the play button, for example, is set up for MIDI CC number 81, has an on value of 127 and off of zero, but you'll see the pad mode is momentary. I think if I change that to toggle and then send that to the launch pad, Let's see if that fixes the problem. So the bottom line here was that I wanted to get more out of the launch pad than just the basic DAW capabilities. And really uh, there are no limits. You know, you can assign CC numbers to any of these pads. The messages going into Logic are device specific, which is pretty handy. So you don't have to worry about, you know, CC85 
step it on the toes of some other assignment that you may have already made. Uh, if you go into Logic, Control Surfaces, Controller Assignments, you'll see that um, over here on the right, when you assign, uh, say, a button to do something like this one does player stop, it is assigned to a particular input. Okay, so the CC numbers are reusable. Uh, to do this, I usually just click on MIDI Learn and I touch the pad. And then under Control Surface Commands, you're going to pick the general command. Yeah. Pick play. So another thought I had was using the launch pad as input for sequencing. And this is actually more simple than you might think. You know, if you um, open a, a MIDI instrument, in my case, I just have the retro synth open here, pretty familiar tool within Logic. And if I record, it's just going to basically pick up MIDI notes. So you know, you could use any of these custom settings that uh, sends MIDI notes uh, as your as your source. So this is one of the standard patterns uh, where these are octaves and, you know, it looks just like a, a keyboard. So if you wanted to record something in here. You know, that's, you know, a simple way, I guess, of just getting MIDI information into, uh, into Logic using your launch pad instead of a keyboard. You know, does that really buy you much? I don't know. You know, I guess a, a better test here would be in the Drum Machine Designer. Of course, I already mentioned that I've got this custom setting set up. So let's just look at that. Back to the beginning. Nothing surprising there that you can use the pads to create a drum pattern and um, play it back. Basic stuff, you can quantize it, change the velocities, all of that uh, stuff that you would typically do. It's nice that the pads are velocity sensitive, so you don't have to spend as much time, you know, editing the velocity of each note. It's more random, so if you're good at finger drumming, that's a, another good use for the, for the launch pad. And you can, you know, any of these note settings will do the job because really it's just MIDI notes that have been assigned to each drum. The real question I think was, you know, more of the pattern editor, which you can use for sequencing. So I haven't really tried this before. Just let me give it a shot. Up here, you could create a pattern region. Normally is you would, you know, you pick where you want these notes and you can do this with a mouse. I'm just gonna loop that region. And, uh, So the question would be, okay, what's what what's the fastest way of getting the data in there? So for example, on the snare drum down here, you know, normally I would just click on the note. Well, there's one of them. Okay, what happens? Will that come in? I hear the note. Well, there it is. Again, it's just MIDI notes being added to a pattern. Nothing special there, really. 
Uh, so yeah, you can use the launch pad as a way to get MIDI data, essentially, many different ways into logic. Of course, you've got to ask the question, why use the launch pad if you have a keyboard? You know, even a $100 uh, launch key mini Mark III will do pretty much everything that you've seen me do, which begs the question, what's the advantage of having 64 pads to work with? Um, and that, you know, sort of came up with some of these custom settings is that in the case of my DAW example, I'm using the top 32 buttons for specific CC functions, and I'm using the bottom ones as a, a drum pad. What I find is whether you're using Logic or a third-party drum tool, they all tend to use a 4x4 pad. And sometimes they extend that for a second 4x4 and maybe a third and fourth. So you might have, you know, four pages. So I guess there's an argument that you could fit it all in on the launch pad as, as one. But it's pretty rare that you need all 64 pads. I would say the best case scenario of why you need the 64 pads is uh, if you're doing looping. Uh, you know, if you're using the live loops feature in Logic or if you're an Ableton user and you want to execute 64 different things. So after you've had the Launchpad X for a while and you've gotten used to all, all of its capabilities, I started to question, should I have bought the X or should I have bought the Pro? You know, the Pro does have a sequencer and some other capabilities, some additional buttons along the bottom. I probably could have made use of that. The problem is it's 64 pads and that's a great number of pads if you need 64 pads and maybe for a live performance that would come in handy. And if you're an Ableton user, maybe that makes better use for live looping of the 64 pads. But I find for finger drumming and a lot of other apps and software that I use, you really only need a four by four pad. You don't necessarily need all 64 pads at the same time. So I've done other things with the pads, as you can tell by this video. And then I was also looking at the Native Instruments Machine Micro, the Mark III, because it has a lot of other buttons and dials on it that could be handy for, you know, mobile music production, either on an iOS device or even with Logic. Uh, carrying around a small device, it's a combination of pads and what I would call um, control surface slash DAW functions. It's difficult to turn the launch pad into a control surface. I'm not sure it, it, it can do it and you can customize it to work that way. And it comes delivered with session mode, which has some DAW-like capabilities, but it doesn't have transport controls out of the gate. You gotta program those in. There's a lot of other missing features, I think, that a control surface would have, but is it really designed for that? I picked up a very inexpensive Akai MPD-218, which is old, just a four by four pad device with six encoders on it, but it's good, it's useful still, and I've made good use of it strictly as a MIDI device, MIDI control device, not as a control surface. The Launchpad X is kind of in between. I was thinking, can I make this into a control surface? Well, you can see I still have some unanswered questions as I venture down this journey on pad devices and how to make good use of them. If you like this kind of content, hit the like button. It supports my channel. Please subscribe to the site. Click on the notification bell if you want to find out about upcoming videos that will be covering more on the same topic.